So I think everyone's touched on this a little bit, but it, I think it's good to call out the risk factors, right? So there is this recreational market that we're all aware of and is in a parallel track to the legitimatized full-blown clinical studies and medically uh, derived uh, pharmacology that we're working on. Um, how can we proactively understand what those risk factors are and also manage them to make sure that it doesn't affect uh, the legitimate market? So, Saad, do you want to address yeah, that a I, bit? I, I just want to be careful. Like, it, 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 when, you, when we say recreational, um, you know, for a lot of these molecules, these are very, very powerful molecules. And this whole concept of a bad trip you must have heard about, you know, through uh, through many stories, um, uh, and it, it can be a very incredibly taxing experience, not one that people want to go back to readily and voluntarily again and again, unless it's a particular problem that they're trying to solve, and they're trying to self-diagnose it, and they're try trying to find something in the underground movement that can help them through the process, right? So this is, it's not the party drug um, that, that you know, many make it out to be, and as a result, you, there's a lot of uh, comparisons to cannabis, which again, I don't think is, is right. Cannabis is an industry that's really driven by a revenue model that's for recreational use, um, whereas psychedelics, this is medicinal. This is very serious. This is about the th right therapy, the right training programs, the kind that MAPS is offering, which is all guided, and, and you've got to go through a protocol if you want to do it right. The risks, look, the science makes sense. We're not going to uh, argue about the science. The efficacy works. We have, that's done. We're, that uh, ship has sailed. Indisputable. The, right. The risks are in the plumbing, right? Okay. How does this get commercialized, I mentioned before? How, does it, how is it accessible? Um, what's the best delivery mechanism? Which molecule is best for which particular indication? Clearly, you know, with what MAPS is doing and MDMA is at the leading front for, for a lot with regards to PTSD anxiety. And then there's others that are coming out with, with MDMA as well. Psilocybin has taken a huge uh, forefront with regards to treatment-resistant depression, which by nature of the term, there's no treatment for that, right? It's treatment-resistant. Um, so the, the risks are inherent in the actual, the, the, the plumbing of it all. How do you, do you and, and we, there's a lot of that that hasn't been figured out yet, right? Okay. This is a long road. Yep. And Evan, did you have a point of view on how, you know, from your perspective, what is it that we're doing now to help legitimate, legitimatize this market and why are we, how are we taking it to another level over and above? You know, what we've, some of the things we've already talked about. Well, you know, they, these drugs are Schedule One, most of them. So, you know, we need to operate in an, in an area where we're battling two agencies here. We believe that the path to least resistance to making these available to the patient population is getting it approved by the FDA, which is what we're doing and some of these companies are doing in the industry. Um, there are some states that have decriminalized it. What does this mean? We're going to watch, but it's still federally illegal. So we're building our business model by getting approved by the FDA and having the DEA reschedule it upon that approval for the indication that we uh, file on. Okay, and I think one of the things that's very interesting about this is in some ways we're stepping out of the lines, right? So we're stepping out of the lines of what we considered a typical pharmacology or chemistry model. So we're allowing the body to function on another level, but we're using the constructs of the pharmaceutical industry to legitimatize this market. So we're using clinical studies, we have a multidisciplinary approach that's you know, borrowed from, you know, an oncology or cardiovascular model. We're doing the studies or we're using the constructs to prove out that, that, that these drugs work. So I think that's an interesting sort of way to look at it. And then the other juxtaposition that's interesting to look at that you touched on is how does this relate to the cannabis market? Because I think a lot of investors here have some experience maybe investing in cannabis and people tend to put this in the cannabis category but this is a completely different category for many reasons that you guys have touched on so i would love to just compare and contrast what you think is different about this as a market uh relative to cannabis so jeff do you want to touch on that i think that the part important thing about following an FDA approval model is that it acknowledges the fact of the me medical marketplace, uh, the office setting. You know, what doctors want is a product that they know the quality of, they know it works, but they also know that they can actually apply it within their office. And I would just say that one, I, I believe that one of the, there are a lot of risks. Um, there's no doubt about it. Uh, it's a complex treatment. 
Uh, I think they will, they, they, they are going to be approved. Uh, but what I think some companies are not necessarily thinking about is, is what is the outlet for the product? And, and one thing I would point out is that psychiatrists are not proceduralists. They don't set up IV clinics. Uh, they don't learn how to do difficult procedural medicine very easily. You can teach them, but it's very hard for them to set that kind of stuff up on their own. Uh, it's expensive, costly. There are FTEs, expensive employees they have to buy, medical materials. So finding a way to bring these into the office and, and, and control the medical setting, control the onset, control the peak of the experience, basically get people to altitude and get them back down to ground and get them home and safe to their loved ones is a particular need that is not really being talked about that much. I, you know, I will say that is actually our starting point. We've spent the last five years specifically trying to solve those problems. The parental delivery through the pump basically is like, it's like a mobile IV, you can think of it. Uh, and that's why we have done this. Other companies are thinking about it. I would keep an eye out for that. If you're looking at a company, you really want to know that the product they're developing can actually fold into existing markets. They don't have to invent an entirely new outlet for this product.